Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. In this presentation, we are going to demonstrate a technique for placement of cold cure acrylic on removable orthodontic appliances. In the construction procedure for removable orthodontic appliances, after the wires have been formed, they are waxed to the plaster model. Sticky wax is used to hold the occlusal crossing of Adam's clasps into close adaptation with marginal ridges. Sticky wax is used on the buccal aspect of the occlusal crossing of labial wires. Also on the labial surface of incisor teeth. The circumferential clasp is waxed securely in place and the finger spring is boxed in with base plate wax and sticky wax. The boxing in procedure creates a little chamber for the, fin the final acrylic for the spring action to work. Undercuts in the typodont model are blocked out with base plate wax so acrylic will draw off. A pencil line indicates the height of the bite plane to be built halfway up the lingual surface of the incisors and cuspids. The waxed up model is soaked in water for approximately 10 minutes to drive off air bubbles. And then liquid separator is placed on the palatal surface of the work model with a paintbrush. The separator is placed on the occlusal surfaces of the teeth anywhere the, where the cold cure acrylic might contact. Attempt to keep the separating medium off the wires if possible. To form cold cure acrylic, first a, an increment of monomer liquid is added to one small section of the palatal surface. The powder is added in that section to cover the wires completely. You can use your finger to tap down the powder after it's been applied. An excess of liquid monomer is always added. Be sure that the powder is completely wetted with monomer at all times. Several applications of the powder and liquid in one small section may be needed to build up the desired thickness of one to two millimeters. The thickness of acrylic may be slightly greater over the wires that extend into the palate. The surface may be smoothed again with your finger and this procedure is used to complete all the rest of the sections of the palatal surface to form the acrylic. Powder and liquid are added on the lingual aspect of the teeth first and it flows down into the palatal vault. The palatal vault area is done last. A bite plane is formed by adding excess powder and liquid lingual to the upper anterior teeth. The final steps involve placement of monomer on the acrylic surface and smoothing with your finger. The appliance is set aside to cure on the bench top. The acrylic is allowed to completely harden and 
then hand instruments are used to pry the acrylic off the model. You release each clasp at the point of occlusal crossing. Be sure you release the circumferential clasp so that the appliance will draw off the model. The next step is to clean the excess acrylic off and the wax that was used to hold it on the model. A scalpel blade can be used for that purpose. Acrylic burrs are used in the first step in the finishing procedure. The acrylic is trimmed to have a contact with the bicuspid and molar teeth of about one to two millimeters. With an approach from the palatal surface, the acrylic burr is used to remove the excess. The same acrylic burr may be used to thin the acrylic itself to one to two millimeters. It's also possible to use acrylic stones and other shapes of acrylic burrs to accomplish this same end result. Our first graphic shows the contact relationship of the acrylic with the bicuspid and molar teeth. The acrylic is trimmed to be one to two millimeters thick at the point where it contacts the lingual surface of those posterior teeth. The bite plane is trimmed to be four to five millimeters wide. It extends halfway up the lingual surface of the incisor and cuspid teeth and it's trimmed parallel to the occlusal plane. The extension of acrylic down into the palate is trimmed to be one to two millimeters thick. It may be slightly thicker as it covers the wires that extend into the palate. Wet pumice on a wet rag wheel is used to polish acrylic. The pumice is applied to the palatal surface of the acrylic Be sure you keep the surface of acrylic wet with pumice. It's the pumice that does the polishing, not the rag wheel. You polish the entire surface of the acrylic with pumice, and then you go to a dry Bendix polish applied to a dry rag wheel. You repeat the polishing with pumice followed by Bendix as needed to produce a shiny surface on the entire palatal surface. One final note on polishing, a wet felt cone with pumice may be used to polish the palatal vault area of an acrylic appliance. The completed acrylic should have the following characteristics. It should have close adaptation to the palate and to the linguals of the teeth. It should be one to two millimeters thick, except in the bite plane and in the extensions covering the wires, where it may be slightly thicker. All of the wires must be completely enclosed in acrylic, and the finger spring must be free to move. 
The bite plane should extend from the distal of the cuspid to the distal of the cuspid, should be four to five millimeters wide, should be parallel to the occlusal plane, and extend halfway up the linguals of the incisor teeth. Lastly, the acrylic must be smooth and shiny. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.